vaši trake ti. Da, alba, ja ne si pala sem tu. The 2018 It is nigh on impossible to get your hands on one of these here in the UK, and it's actually been banned in most of Europe for a variety of reasons. The 2018 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Chevrolet won't even entertain selling you one of these outside of the US, but we've managed to get our hands on one. And Okay, the owner didn't actually have to sell his soul in some sort of dark ritual to get his hands on it, but he did have to pay a stranger for a favor, which if you ask me, can be just as dangerous. In fact, everything about this car just seems dangerous. It looks dangerous, it sounds dangerous, and there's actually more than meets the eye to this particular one. The standard Camaro ZL1 will put out 650 brake horsepower and 650 pound-foot of torque, but this is no standard ZL1. This one has been tastefully tampered with. Mainly through the means of a ported throttle body and supercharger, this one puts out 777 brake horsepower and 760 pound-foot of torque. A healthy gain in performance that shouldn't make this LC4 6.2-litre V8 break too much of a sweat. After all, it is the same engine you'll find in the Z06 Corvette and which VET owners confidently claim can handle 1000 brake on stock internals. It also has an upgraded induction kit, a stage 2 water methanol injection system for quote-unquote mostly cooling, and a bespoke exhaust line that makes it sound like its GT4 race car counterpart. Oh man, not many things sound better than a supercharged V8. This particular car has also been fitted with some slightly shorter springs to lower it a little bit and because of that obviously the Magna Ride suspension then had to be uh, readjusted. Now I don't know if it's because of that that we're getting a little bit of wheel arch rub today but uh, hey if anything that's uh, even more reminiscing of an actual race car. In terms of transmission, you have two options. You can get it in automatic or with a six-speed manual. And now, it's quite easy to romanticize the manual gearbox. I'm sure, obviously, the, the manual version of this would be amazing to drive. But there is a lot to be said for being able to just keep your hands on the wheel at quarter to three position and operate the paddles and concentrate on your lines. And this 10-speed hydromatic allows you to do exactly that. That's right, you heard that correctly. 10-speed. This is a 10-speed automatic gearbox. And here's the kicker, it was co-developed with Ford, Chevrolet's arch nemesis. And now, you'd think that Ford would take this opportunity to sabotage the Camaro and just sell loads of Mustangs down the line. But instead, they arrived at this 10-speed transmission with a 7.39 ratio, which allows for smaller steps in between gears, which in theory means that you're always at higher revs at any time, which helps quite a lot, especially in situations like this, in corner exit. And I gotta say, it really does that. In Baku, F1 drivers will change gears up to 70 times per lap. I reckon this is as close as you'll ever get to that. It's relentless. The electronic limited slip diff is actually perfectly calibrated. It's very, very responsive. Anytime the back end sort of steps out, even the slightest bit, you can actually see on your dashboard, there's a diagram that shows you how much the limited slip diff is stepping in. The steering is honestly, to me, unsurprisingly direct. I mean, long gone are the days where American cars couldn't corner. And even though it's electric, not hydraulic, honestly, it's fine. Chevrolet put that nimbleness to good use when they set an impressive lap time of 7 minutes and 29 seconds around the ring back in 2017. And then they went back in 2018 to shave 13 seconds off of that with the ZL1 1LE, a more track-focused version of the ZL1 with the same 650 brake horsepower but less weight and crucially wider tyres. 
Of course, this one is now up to 777 brake horsepower, which is 127 more than the One LE. So I'd be very curious to see what kind of lap time this would set around the ring. Maybe in a future car fiction video, who knows? Lap time schmap times though. What this is, is a tarmac ripping machine that loves lighting its rears up at any given opportunity. <laughs> track mode like I do at the moment, the heads up display will cue with a shift light, which is pretty cool. And if you try and downshift or upshift too early, it will say shift denied, which I think is absolutely hilarious. The paddles are actually a pleasure to operate. Attached to this lovely Alcantara steering wheel, none of that paddles on the steering column BS. Now I did read some complaints online that if you're driving in full auto, in a, in a more spirited manner, let's put it that way, the gears can start doing some strange things. So sometimes even if you give it just half throttle, the kick down can get quite aggressive and it will go down one gear, two gears, too many. And the solution to that is actually quite simple. You take one of your hands, it doesn't matter which hand, any hand, and just slap yourself across the face and then put it back into manual. And then when you get home, you pick up your phone and book yourself a track day with some professional tuition. And speaking of on-track tuition, the z one has got a performance data recorder. One of the best I've seen on any car, to be honest. Now, it's not exactly a MoTeC system or a V-Box system. You're not gonna get home and look at the data and overlay it with your instructors, but it actually allows you to just do a few laps on track, pull up into the pits, and you can watch your laps straight away, there and then, in the car. So you can get instant feedback from your instructor. It's amazing. And speaking of amazing, as a fan of aggressive obtuse angles in automotive design, I personally think designer Hasu Lee and his team have absolutely nailed the look of the sixth generation Camaro. Those in the know will also have noticed that the current owner has added some styling upgrades from the ZL11 LE, which is okay with me as they are mostly functional upgrades and I think they just tiptoe on the edge of perfect without stepping into overkill. In my opinion, this car looks absolutely stunning from every angle, especially in this color. Filming cars in the UK can be an absolute ball ache. Ask any of our videographers. More often than not, the weather's overcast and the colors are flat and then the car looks drab. With this, when the light is just right, you can see all its fine details and crisp lines. But even when the light isn't great, it just looks like a dark void of doom that's coming to engulf you. So menacing. And whilst to some it may look a little bit boxy, actually Chevrolet spent over a hundred hours in the winter on making sure that the design is as functional as it looks good. They basically made sure that every feature from your dive planes, the front fenders, the bonnet insert, everything was designed to make sure that air flows around it as easily as possible. Not just around it, over it, underneath it, and actually into it as well. To maximize airflow, Chevrolet vandalized their own badge to increase by three cubic meters the amount of air going into the engine. Goodbye, bow tie, hello, flow tie. Whilst this particular Camaro looks more Decepticon than Autobot and for all its evil connotations and its menacing look, it actually chooses to use its powers for good. You'll be able to see it at pretty much every Sporting Bears event, which is a charity that focuses on trying to raise money for all sorts of children's charities. So for a small donation, you too could get a passenger lap in this very car for the most noble of causes. Look. I'm sure there are downsides to the ZL1 that I'm not picking up on simply because I'm blinded by the sense of occasion. Drunk on what is for us the novelty of spending an afternoon being an absolute degenerate around the circuit in a V8 brute. I'm sure there are some minuses, but honestly, all I can see from the driver's seat is a barrage of pluses, and I left the best to last. A new Camaro ZL1 retails at around $65,000 or just over £60,000 all in when imported to the UK. That is ridiculous value for money. And if we allow for the fact that they're only going up in value, this might just be the definition of a no-brainer. Would I buy one of these? No, absolutely not, because if I did, I'd be on track 24-7. Americans really know how to do fun, don't they? You Americans really know how to do fun.
it's always a happy day for us here at Carfection when we get to feature muscle cars, especially one like this. If you like muscle cars, here's another video that you can check out right now. And obviously just let us know what other muscle cars we should feature on the channel. Leave it in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, turn the notification bell icon on, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.